Hey, what's going on guys? Jeff Koga here. So welcome for, uh, especially the new folks in here in the Lab Group Accelerator Coaching Program. Now, I'm gonna start doing more of these live streams in the group, hopefully so that way I can, number one, engage with more of you guys and gals, but also at the same time, have you guys and gals look at the real estate business in a completely different way. Because I'm, what I'm a firm believer on is, uh, regardless of where you're at currently in your business, okay? Majority of you guys and gals are most likely in the business because they're, you're one, starting off, or you've been around the block for a while now and uh, you wanna take your business to the next level, or third, you've been around the block for a long time and you're kind of rebuilding yourself because you see the changes that are happening in the real estate business. Now, regardless of where you're at, right, one thing is for certain, is that the old way of doing business is no longer number one working or number two it's not working as effectively so what do you do okay and many times a lot of my students that are going through the coaching program the question I get asked a lot is this they go hey Jeff if you have to start all over again knowing what you know now but you have a limited marketing budget what would you do and uh, typically then they'll add something else behind that, which is like, hey, if I need to make 10 grand in the next 30 days or 60 days, what, uh, what would you do, okay? So it's something around that question of, hey, knowing what you know now, what would you do to generate business? And if I need to make an X amount of dollars, like 10 grand in the next 30 to 60 days, what would you do? Now, when, when I get asked that question, typically I default to something that I know very well and uh, something that has allowed me to make big chunks of cash fast, okay? Now, in that case, that strategy in the space of real estate, it's called wholesaling, all right, wholesaling. Now, why do I wanna talk about that? Is because I'm a firm believer is that depending on where you're currently at in your business, you can add that strategy to your current business to make an additional 100 grand in the next six to 12 months, all right? I'm not gonna sugarcoat it and say, hey, you can probably do that in 30 days unless you have experience wholesaling and all you need is a different channel of leads. Then if that's the case, then I can probably rest assured with a few strategic changes, pulling a few levers, uh, you will be able to hit that, all right? Now, let's talk about a couple of things on what wholesaling is all about, and then I'll kind of tie in the technical knowledge to some strategies that you can go out and apply uh, currently in your marketplace. Okay, so first off, the many questions I get asked a lot is, what is wholesaling? Well, wholesaling is uh, something that has become very popular, and uh, it's, it's something that has been around for decades and decades and decades, all right? And uh, it's not just in the space of real estate, all right? It's just a concept called arbitrage arbitrage all right now what is the term arbitrage arbitrage means that what you get an asset or something tangible okay or it can be intangible really uh, but to be able to get it at an undervalued price point and then with a contract you have in place because a contract gives you equitable interest and then being able to sell that equitable interest in a contract with a higher amount and when you do that, that difference that you have, uh, that is equate to a spread and you can make that as a payment. So an example I use a lot is like, imagine like if your friend is selling a Rolex, all right? Now, for whatever reason, he needs to sell it fast, okay? Like, for example, he needs to pay taxes. Like maybe he wants to buy a gift for his significant other, okay? Um, his wife or something like that. Maybe there are some financial needs. Whatever it is, he needs to make money. So, this Rolex watch, okay, even if it's used, it's worth 20 grand, let's just say, okay? But because he needs at least $10,000, he's willing to sell it now, anything remotely close to $10,000. Okay, so let's just say you hear that and you're just like, oh, okay, well, I can give you that. Let me buy it at $10,000. So you draw up a purchase contract and you say, okay, I'll buy this for uh, $10,000, but hey, give me a couple days so that way I can do my due diligence and give me a couple days so that way I can close on this. And then your friend agrees to it. All right, now, when you take that contract, now you can do one or two things. You can physically close on it, okay? So if you have the money, cool, close on it. Or number two, you can go raise the money, all 
all right? So you can get it from an investor, a friend, or someone, maybe someone who knows the Rolex business and they're willing to give you $10,000 loan. Maybe you have to pay some money for it, that, that cost, okay, to borrow that money. But if you know it's worth 20 grand, you know, would you pay $1,000 to quote unquote uh, borrow $11,000, right? You probably will if you confidently know you can sell it for 10 grand, okay? So that's one way, all right? So you borrow the money, you raise the money, you do it yourself and you physically close on it, all right? Now, the other one where it's becoming kind of like very popular in the space of guru land where it's kind of like, hey, you can invest in real estate with no cash, no credit or whatever, okay? The strategy of wholesaling, I don't really consider it as investing. Uh, it's more of arbitraging. Okay, it's more of what I like to call in the world of equities market or the stock market. It's more of quote unquote swing trading or day trading real estate. That's that's what I like to really call it. And because what you're doing is you're getting an option or better yet a contract on that Rolex for like 10 grand. And then you go around and look for a legal right to uh, purchase it. You go out and says, okay, is there someone that want to be actually buy this contract for 5,000 extra on uh, what I can get it for? So $15,000. All right now so you go out you shop it around and you're like oh okay I found someone that's willing to buy for fifteen thousand dollars so if you do that then you can physically close on it and uh, do something called like a back-to-back -back close where you physically close on it with borrowed money called transactional funding all right there's something that called that and then you close on it it records and then immediately afterwards close the second leg or the A to B leg closed on transactional funding and then you go to B to C and then you close on that and then that difference with some fees you'll get less than a couple hundred bucks less than uh, five thousand dollars or whatever four thousand and some change okay you can do that so those are some of the ways to close that now if you have never done this right the typical question I get asked after this is say hey Jeff you know what um, I'm not exactly sure on what the detail is so how do you actually do it okay now I can do a live training on that if you're interested leave a comment below and I can break down the process on that because depending on where you're currently at um, because real estate is different in terms of closing right if you're in a judicial state then how you close is a little bit different than a non-judicial state um, like in uh, the West Coast right we use like an escrow company or a title company to close if you're on the East Coast you typically use like an uh, attorney to close okay so so it's gonna vary but the mechanics are pretty much the same okay and what I don't want you to do is get bogged down on the how to actually uh, close because what I want you to do is know that that strategy exists so if you can locate and you can talk to a seller that's willing to sell a property uh, discounted then you have the ability to do that now sometimes depending on what you do you might be like well no seller wants to sell a property like 30% from fair market value especially in this uh, super hot market or they may not want to sell uh, even 40% discount on a super hot market and then the truth is the answer is yes okay any type of person who does not have some type of financial need to sell fast okay it's you're not gonna convince them to sell at a discount it's just the way it is okay it's just the way it is but okay every business has what I like to call a secondary market where you can get things at a quote-unquote discount okay so if you've been in the real estate market and you maybe have done loans you know that a secondary market exists where once you take out a loan that loan is sold in the secondary market that's a secondary market okay um, what else is that if you have sold any type of physical products okay and you cannot get it off your books there is a secondary market for that same thing as if a car dealership okay um, because car dealers have a line of credit against its inventory so if it goes past a certain time frame it hits their books and it it shrinks down the line of credit so they will sell it in the secondary market like at an auction so the wholesaling community in real estate that's a quasi secondary market okay so every every uh, business has a secondary market okay now understanding that and understanding that there is a secondary market the question is not not it shouldn't be hey you know what does this work in my marketplace the question is where is the secondary market in my marketplace and if you're in a hyper competitive market all right where you need to get a big enough discount to make this work the market that typically works is wholesaling properties to developers 
all right, to bona fide real developers. And the strategy that works really, really well, and when I say developers, people that are building units, okay, or and or they're doing additions. If you're trying to wholesale to a cookie cutter uh, rehabber where they just do like bathroom and kitchen stuff in a hyper competitive marketplace, okay, it's really, really challenging. Now, if you are in an area where uh, medium home prices like south of 200,000, that strategy will still work. Okay, now why does that still work? Is because mathematically there's less real estate agents in that area. And not only there's less real estate agents, but also at the same time, those real estate agents in that market, okay, are not spending that much marketing dollars. All right, now why do I say that? Is because, think of it this way, okay? If you're in a market like Los Angeles, you're in a market like Silicon Valley, you're in a market um, that's a metropolitan area where medium home prices are like 400 grand plus, right? One deal just getting a listing on that property, right? Is gonna pump out, if you just get 3% on that, $12,000. So if you do like four in a year, okay? Five in a year, six in a year, um, some agents are really, really happy about it. But if you are in a market where homes are only $200,000, you can't really quite survive off that. So a lot of the agents in there are part-time agents and or they're not using money, uh, they're not spending or investing money in marketing. So that gives you a competitive advantage as a wholesaler to snag up deals to wholesale, okay? Now, so how do you get deals in a hyper-competitive market is you gotta know your marketplace, okay? What area and what zip code can you physically uh, get a property under contract to wholesale it to someone else? And um, to make that work, you typically have to be in an area where price per square feet, okay? Price per square feet has to be 300 square feet and above. Now, why is that? is because when you do an addition, depending on the, the soft cost, depending on where you're at, okay, this definitely will not work in an affluent zip code like 90210 or something like that, right? The most popular zip code in all the world probably um, that people know, it will not work. Why? It's because the finishes has to be a lot higher because you have multimillionaires that's living in there, okay? But in most areas, you can do an addition for $100 a square feet. So a lot of investors and developers that are hardcore real, I'm talking about not cookie cutter, uh, first time rodeo investors, as I like to call it, okay? Um, they wanna get three to one on their money. So to get three to one on their money, the flip out price has to be 300 square feet and above. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So the easy thing is, is if you're a real estate agent looking at that, look at it and be like, find those areas. Okay, and find those areas and then you'll be able to locate certain zip codes that you can go after. All right, now that strategy of using data to manipulate and data to figure out what area to go on, this is a whole new training that I can do um, that I've done many, many times and it's literally like a one day class and stuff like that, okay? But I wanted to give you that insight because it's really, really easy when you can figure that stuff out. Because when you can figure that kind of stuff out, then you can make strategic alliances, strategic partnerships with these developers that will pay you, you know, 4%. All right, they'll pay you 5%, 6%, okay? Like for example, me, I have a friends of mine who's our developers um, that have done much more bigger deals than I have. I've done development deals, I've done ground up construction and things like that, okay? But some of my friends have done a lot more, like one of my good friends has construction over 250 units going on right now in uh, Los Angeles, okay? 250 units and has a equivalent debt um, in terms of capital that he's using from investor over uh, $30 million that he's currently using to build these structures up. So with him, I have a strategic alliance where if I find him a deal, they're going to pay me uh, at least 4% of the pickup price. Okay, so that's what you wanna do. So if you wanna make an additional like $100,000, those are type of strategies that you wanna implement because if you can implement that, then you can close the gap of a traditional real estate transaction and be able to get paid much faster, okay? So so that's what I recommend individuals to do if you are looking to make an additional $100,000 in their business is that don't get caught up in the professional bias that one, like many of your brokers will tell you is to farm your area, pound the area, traditional, 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 okay? Especially if you're in a metropolitan area because if you do that, 
You're in a hyper competitive marketplace and it's going to be really, really challenging. You got to find these pockets. You got to find the areas where you got leverage points. And when you find those areas, you just have to milk it as much as possible. All right. And that's what I got for you on this beautiful day. Um, I came to the office right now, so I'm going to go back in there. But if you have any questions, all right, and you like this kind of uh, uh, training, I'll do a lot more of this uh, depending on uh, uh, the comments and feedback, I guess. So leave it below and says, hey, Jeff, I love it. Or if you have more uh, questions, you know, be detailed as possible so I can actually answer them for you and leave a question below and that's what I got for you so go out there keep on going out there keep on grinding keep on hustling and uh, uh, keep on building your business my friend and that's what I got this is Jeff Koga love you guys take care and bye bye